Hello everyone. So, welcome to a another session on cardiovascular system pathology. Today, I am going to discuss a very very important both for your exams, but much more than that for your clinical, fine for your day to day life. That is hypertensive vascular disease. You know, like I have told earlier. how india is called as a tp capital india is also emerging to achieve the place of the hypertension and diabetes mellitus capital in the world because hypertension is very so common the most important reason for the same is the high consumption of salt in our diet so that is the one of the most important risk factor so when we say that a patient is having clinically significant hypertension we use the word clinically significant hypertension when the diastolic blood pressure is above 80 mm mercury or systolic pressure is more than 120 mm mercury in both these cases we say that the patient is having clinically significant hypertension fine yes so this is the new criteria remember this is the new criteria this is an update in the 10th edition those who are following the 9th edition of robins please make sure of, uh, of this update fine yes okay we have lot and lot of causes lot and lot of causes of hypertension so generally i am classifying hypertension into generally i am uh, classifying hypertension into number 1 primary hypertension then we have something called as secondary hypertension remember primary hypertension is idiopathic and remember it is this primary hypertension which accounts for around 90 percentage 90 percentage okay yes that is uh, idiopathic the cause is not known isn't that is what we call it as essential hypertension the rest 10 percentage is secondary hypertension this is because of any underlying renal or adrenal pathology like hyperaldosteronism cushing syndrome pheochromocytoma renal artery stenosis or some other identifiable cause very very important each point is an mcq each point is an mcq fine yes okay now let us see what are the causes of hypertension i told you that 90 to 95 percent is a essential hypertension whose cause is not known this is a straight one liner mcq asked innumerable thousands of times in pg entrance exam secondary hypertension renal cause we have glomerulonephritis polycystic kidney disease renal artery stenosis ren renin producing tumors endocrine causes cushing syndrome primary hyperaldosteronism congenital adrenal hyperplasia fine exogenous hormone because of chronic steroid intake pheochromocytoma acromegaly thyrotoxicosis pregnancy induced hypertension also called as preeclampsia or cardiovascular causes like coagulation of aorta polyarthritis nodosa increased cardiac output aorta rigidity neurological causes like sleep apnea increased icd increased intracranial tension all these are the causes of secondary hypertension not primary primary is idiopathic okay so see before going to that let us go to some of the important physiology you know that blood pressure is equal to cardiac output into peripheral resistance so what are the factors influencing blood pressure the factors which influence cardiac output and peripheral resistance indirectly influence the blood pressure for example cardiac output depends upon what we call it as what we call it as stroke volume am i right blood volume so sodium mineralocorticoids and atrial natriuretic peptides helps in uh, maintaining the cardiac output blood volume or cardiac factor that is heart rate cardiac output is nothing else but stroke volume into heart rate this is the formula that you learn in physiology so the cardiac output is determined by okay factors of which influence the stroke volume as well as the factors which influence the heart rate then peripheral resistance we have humoral factors vasoconstrictors angiotensin endothelin here comes a question which is the most potent vasoconstrictor answer is endothelin no confusion end of controversy no controversy fine endothelin is the most potent vasoconstrictor followed by angiotensin 2 catecholamines dilators we have nitric oxide also called as yes vascular sorry uh, uh, platelet derived relaxing factor pdrf that is nitric oxide then uh neural factors okay and local factors like auto regulation uh, that is ph 
and hypoxia. So these are all the factors which influence the cardiac output, peripheral resistance, and indirectly influencing blood pressure. So this is what they have written here. And there is a entity called it as malignant hypertension. What is malignant hypertension? Severe. That means systolic pressure is more than 200 millimeter mercury diastolic pressure is more than 120 millimeter mercury associated with the renal failure okay retinal hemorrhages exudate we call this as malignant hypertension fine yes then coming to blood pressure regulation i have already told you the factors that is cardiac output what are the factors just remember this picture you can write or uh, how much what pages huh? then you can write innumerable number of pages with a simple picture okay yes so that is how robbins differs from other textbook okay other textbook they will say what they will explain in paragraphs and paragraphs but robbins uh, all the whole story he will summarize in a single picture if you remember this it's more than enough for an undergraduate okay see uh, kinase prostaglandin nitric oxide all those stuffs and remember the factors which are released from the kidney, adrenals and myocardium also interact to influence the vascular tone and regulate the blood volume by adjusting the sodium balance. You know, sodium is the one okay, uh, which is present in the salt that is responsible for blood pressure elevation. So the same sodium which is present in the plasma, okay, um, is responsible for what we call it as the um, balance or maintenance of the blood pressure. And you know, we have a very important tightly regulated system called as renin-angiotensin-aldosterone system. It is this pathway which determines the net sodium balance in our body and remember a typical diet contains around 100 milli equivalent of sodium and 99.5 percentage of the filtered salt must be reabsorbed to maintain the total body sodium levels okay now let us see about the renin angiotensin aldosterone mechanism whenever there is blood pressure decreases when the blood pressure decreases what will happen it will stimulate it will be sensed by some receptors okay baroreceptors which will stimulate the kidney and which will produce renin this renin is going to convert the angiotensinogen which is produced from liver to angiotensin 1 and this angiotensin 1 is converted to angiotensin 2 with the help of an enzyme called as angiotensin converting enzyme which is produced by the endothelium mainly from the lungs okay this will stimulate the adrenal to secrete aldosterone which reabsorbs so and water which causes further vasoconstriction and increased blood volume increase to increase to blood pressure this blood pressure will cause this volume overload which will stimulate the heart to release atrial natriuretic peptide i told you atrial natriuretic peptide is uh, a vasodilator which will cause this vasodilation it excretes sodium and water hence it decreases blood volume and this cycle continues so increased blood pressure because of increased volume and increased resistance what are the conditions which causes increased volume okay we have excess dietary sodium or hyperaldosteronism increased sodium reabsorption we have three syndrome one is called gittelman syndrome barter syndrome and little syndrome this three question has been asked in jipmer okay this question has been asked in jipmer uh, out of the following all of the following are uh, sodium reabsorption syndromes except okay jipmer question i am writing it here Okay, that is Gittelman syndrome, Barter syndrome and Little syndrome. All these are associated with increased sodium resorption. Okay, resorption. Then increased resistance in case of eochromocytoma or increased renin angiotensin aldosterone axis. The same thing only they are described in paragraph. See, renin it is produced by what? Then cleavage of angiotensin 2, all those stuffs. I have already discussed all those things. Fine, then natriuretic peptide. Fine, yes. Coming into the pathogenesis of hypertension. What is the pathogenesis of hypertension? You already know. You already know the normal mechanism. Any problem in any of that pathway, it will result in hypertension. I told you that 90 to 95 percentage of hypertension is idiopathic. That means without any reason. But what are the causes of secondary hypertension? In renovascular hypertension, renal artery stenosis will happen. Then the artery stenosed. What will happen? The blood flow decreases. Am I right? Blood flow decreases means it will either it will increases the renin secretion, aldosterone secretion increases, sodium. Uh, what to say? Yeah, uh, the sodium and water will be reabsorbed, increased sodium level, increased blood pressure, hypertension. Primary hyperaldosteronism, already the aldosterone levels are very high because that is a problem with the adrenal cortex. So again, increased sodium and water reabsorption, hypertension. Then there are some gene disorders. Yes, this is the most important update. Okay, this is the Robin's 10th edition updates. Fine, very, very important. Please focus here. 
gene defects which involve the enzymes called as 11 beta hydroxylase or 17 alpha hydroxylase can lead to increased aldosterone secretion which finally leads to hypertension and also and also some other gene mutations that is which causes mutations in the epithelial sodium channel protein that results in a condition like little syndrome barter syndrome gitterman syndrome all this also causes increased reabsorption of sodium from the distal convoluted tubule of the nephron leading to what increased uh, sorry uh, what sodium levels and leading to hypertension what is the mechanism of essential hypertension what do you mean by essential hypertension primary hypertension that means idiopathic but there are some mechanisms out of which one is the genetic factors okay genetic factors number one is insufficient renal sodium excretion okay yes renal sodium excretion then some vasoconstrictive influences and environmental factors just remember this heading there is no need that you should understand in uh, depth or details then coming into what is the vascular pathology in hypertension okay yes you know the hypertension is not only going to accelerate atherosclerosis that we will see discuss later but it is also going to cause some degenerative changes in the large and medium sized arteries so which can lead to life threatening events like what we called as aortic dissection and the cerebrovascular hemorrhage so we have some two important pathologies here uh, in, in related to hypertension one is what we call it as benign hypertension another one is called as malignant hypertension in benign hypertension we will observe what we call it as hyaline arteriolosclerosis and in malignant hypertension we will see something what we call it as hyperplastic arteriolosclerosis okay yes fine so now let us see what is hyaline arteriolosclerosis in benign hypertension the arterioles as you can see in this picture as you can see in this picture okay uh, what you are seeing you can see a homogeneous okay pink hyaline thickening and there is obliteration of the lumen am i right yes in response to the chronic hemodynamic pressures of the hypertension and uh, fine remember it is also seen in patients with uh, in chronic hypertension that is benign hypertension while malignant malignant hypertension means more than 200 i told you know 200 mm mercury yes so in nephrosclerosis nephrosclerosis what will happen nephrosclerosis means blood supply to the kidney is affected there will be diffuse in, uh, impairment of the renal blood supply and there as a result what will happen the glomerular scarring will occur what happens in case of malignant hypertension it is malignant hypertension okay malignant hypertension here i am writing benign hypertension that two terminologies has not been used uh, in robins so that's why i am telling it again in malignant hypertension what will happen the lesion occurs in severe hypertension and the vessels you can see the characteristic what is this appearance yes the onion skin appearance onion skin appearance we can see in lot of condition in vessel pathology in blood vessel pathology onion skin uh, lesions if you are seeing in histopathology slide it is a spotter for your practical exam okay immediately your diagnosis should be malignant hypertension laminated concentric thickening of walls with the luminal narrowing seen in malignant hypertension there is reduplication of the basement membrane okay yes and you can of course see in pulmonary hypertension pulmonary hypertension means what it is seen in mainly case of left heart failure congenital heart disease any valvular lesions all those there also you will see what there will be what ingimal fibrosis me what tunica media hyperplasia and all those things but just remember only the things what is that hyaline hyaline thickening with the luminal narrowing means hyaline arteriolosclerosis benign hypertension is the diagnosis if you are seeing onion skin appearance lamellated concentric uh, what thickening of the walls with the luminal narrowing your answer should be malignant hypertension that is hyperplastic arteriolosclerosis fine yes then what is arteriosclerosis arteriosclerosis means it is actually uh, a general term okay we have something what we call as arteriolo uh, why it is called as arteriolo because it is going to affect small arteries and uh, arterioles so arterio means it is mainly going to affect the arteries arteries okay yes there will be arterial wall thickening and loss of elasticity is actually what to say it's a broad term okay yes arteriolosclerosis i told you hyperplastic and hyaline arteriolosclerosis that means the arterioles small arteries are affected we have something what we call it as yes and remember arteriosclerosis can be asked as a short note at that time you should not okay blink oh what is arteriosclerosis it's nothing else but we have two entities now hyaline and hyperplastic both are varieties of arteriosclerosis only we have something called as monkey back medial sclerosis in which there will be calcifications of medial walls of muscular arteries okay medial walls of the muscular arteries which typically start along the uh, internal elastic membrane fine fine yes 
so it's just uh, it's nothing else but what is mongeberg medial sclerosis i thought i think you remember this in dystrophic calcification yes mongeberg medial sclerosis it is nothing else but calcification of the tunica media of the muscular arteries fine yes and sometimes we can see something what we call it as fibromuscular intimal hyperplasia that means uh, only the tunica intima will undergo uh, hyperplasia okay that is uh, fibromuscular intimal hyper just name sake but the most important question they may ask is mongeberg uh, in mcq they may ask mongeberg medial sclerosis is a type of dystrophic calcification there will be calcification of medial walls of muscular arteries arteriosclerosis means we have hyaline and hyperplastic arteriolo means it's mainly affecting small arteries and arterioles okay so with this we have finished what is the normal blood pressure regulation what is the normal uh, how the sodium levels all those are maintained in our body then we have seen what is the pathology in hypertension what is primary what is secondary causes of secondary hypertension what are the possible mechanisms they have uh, explained in case of essential or primary hypertension what are the vascular pathology i told you know, arterio hyaline and hyperplastic in benign and malignant hypertension we have observed remember onion skin in case of malignant hypertension and hyaline wall thickening in case of what we call it as benign hypertension and the another most important point that what i have to uh, stress out is what is arteriosclerosis that means it is actually a type of arteriosclerosis only i can say because i told you it's a broader term fine yes so with this we have finished some of the one of the most important topic a very must known topic okay uh, that is uh, hypertensive vascular disease and in the next session we will be discussing about a very very important most frequently asked what uh, long question and a must known question and the underlying it is this disease which serves as the problem uh, what are the what root cause for almost all the pathologies in our body that is the coronary artery disease or stroke or whatever it may be that is atherosclerosis that which we will be discussing in next class so i hope this session has been useful for all thank you